Welcome to Alpha Book Club. Uh, I'm Hector Navarro. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is an online book club for all our, for all our Alpha community <laughs> members. It always trips me up. Joining me as always is Nerdist Editor-in-Chief, Rachel Hine. Hello. Internet, give it up for Rachel Hine. Hi, Come on. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Rachel. Oh, my God. Thanks for having me. On the show where we are forced to talk about books every week. I know. But our friendship isn't forced, and that's real. I know. So <laughs> thank you so much for being This is great. Uh, Maude Garrett has finally left the fifth dimension, but she is now being held up by customs, unfortunately. Um, so... Mod, yeah, it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of also true. Like yeah. she, she really did get held up. She's with having customs. some issues, but I was thinking it'd be really fun because next week is our last week uh, mm -hmm. on this book, and we think that she's coming back. Fingers We're crossed. Hoping. We're hoping. So it'd be fun to have her recap the book so far for everyone too, because we can do oh. kind of lightning reactions for Mod while she was out and get all of her. Like I'm totally. sure she has so many funny. I know. Insightful Reading experiences. Notes. Where did she yeah. read it? How did? What did yeah. she read it off of? What happened in her life while she was reading it? Yeah, yeah. that's going to be a so lot of fun. Do that. If you guys are first joining us, just joining us for the first time, we are tackling a wrinkle in time, and it's time Woo. to get our wrinkle on, y'all. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and whether this is your first time watching or you've been a fan since the very beginning, we want to hear from you. So hit us up in the chat. If you guys can't see the chat, go to the Alpha front page. ProjectAlpha.com. The chat is a little chat icon up in the right, that little square with the three dots in it. Click on that. All the chats are going to open up for you. Click on Alpha Book Club. That's where we're in in the chat right now, guys. And uh, we can see a bunch of people in there right now. Uh, so we're really excited to start talking about it. But uh, let's talk about what's happened so far in the book, A Wrinkle in Time, by Madeline Le Engel. <laughs> happened up to this point. Rachel, give us a rundown of the first six chapters because Ooh. this week we're covering seven, eight, and nine. But the yes. first six, what happened? Well, we meet our uh, young protagonists, the Murray siblings, Meg, and her little precocious brother, the five-year-old Charles Wallace. Charles Wallace. They come from a very intelligent family of scientists. There's Mrs. Murray, who's a beautiful, brilliant scientist, mm -hmm. and Mr. Murray, who has been missing on some sort of government mission. He's very brilliant as well, and I also mm -hmm. think he's probably very beautiful. They describe him as being he's very like handsome and right. I'm sure he's beautiful. Come on. And he has Chris Pine playing yeah. him in the movie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, um, and so they are. Meg feels a, is an outsider a little bit. She doesn't feel like she's as smart as her family. She doesn't feel like she quite fits in. The people in the town sort of judge her and her family for what happened with her mm -hmm. father. So she befriends a young boy named Calvin, who's also kind of an outsider. He mm -hmm. comes from a family of multiple siblings. He's also very smart. He connects with Meg and Charles Wallace mm -hmm. as they meet these three magical women, Mrs. Who, mm -hmm. Mrs. Witch, and Mrs. What's It, mm -hmm. who are, we later learn, they could be witches, they could be angels, they're something, but they're these Aliens, magical. Something. Yeah, they could, ooh. It is I science mean, fiction. It is science fiction, and they do, so they meet these three women mysterious beings mm -hmm. who say you have to come with us we're gonna help you find your father mm -hmm. and I'm trying to like rein it all in and then they end up on these other in these other galaxies so they, 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 they do yeah. something that they call tessering yes and it's they, they're describing a tesseract a tesser Racked is it something that allows you to travel through space and time. It's mm -hmm. not a cosmic cube like if you're a Marvel Comics nerd like I am, but it's something that allows them to travel through space and they end up on another planet. Mm -hmm. And then they even tesser through time where they describe like, yes, we kidnapped you from your planet Earth, but like we'll we set it up so that when we come back, you're going to be back five minutes before you left. So if, if something happens to you, no one will really be the wiser. It was exactly. sort of implied in there yeah, too, exactly. which was terrifying. So they are traveling through space and time, mm -hmm. looking for their father, learning that there are beings in this world that fight against evil. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them are scientists and writers and artists and Jesus Christ and all sorts of different people who That have was not an, just an exclamation from you right now. No, that was literally, literally Jesus, Jesus is, is fighting the darkness. People. And we're dealing with a lot of spiritual concepts in this book, but it's all about uh, an inherent goodness, not really any type of religion. Correct. Also, yeah. one of the, uh, one of the, is it Mrs. Mrs. What's it? Trans I think it was Mrs. What's it. Transforms into a yes mystical Pegasus creature. Centaur. Centaur with wings. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. A beautiful man, but like they're like but genderless, but like yeah. a gorgeous creature. Yeah. Uh, but doesn't sound like Mrs. What's it, but is still Mrs. What's it. I imagine sort of like Tilda Swinton and Constantine. Mm. When she plays the angel Gabriel, and I she's haven't seen Constantine yet with Wait, Keanu Reeves. 
I have not seen Constantine. What? Shia LaBeouf, Keanu Reeves. I did. I did not know Tilda. Some in people. It. I love Tilda Swinton. I gotta She's watch amazing. It. I know um, some. Here's what I remember about Constantine. Just a real sidebar. Yeah. My family. Uh, when my grandmother was still alive, my dad's mom, they all wanted to take my grandma to go see like a scary movie and they snuck wine into the theater and they went and picked Constantine and they came back and they were like, it sucked. They were like disappointed because it wasn't that type of, you know, and, yeah. I, and I was like, oh, you should, I should have, you should have asked me because I would have told you it's like a comic book, like it's not, it's not but a I gotta horror. watch it until yeah. so oh, transforms. Man. She plays the angel Gabriel, so mm -hmm. she's this like very, she's very Tilda, mm -hmm. so. Um. <laughs> Hein2000 asks, how does it compare to a TARDIS, Tessering? Great question. That is a great question. great question. It's not an object or a place that you step into. It is not as far, well, as far as we know. It's, it's not, like a state of mind. It's not bigger on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not run by a, a British alien mm -hmm. um, named mm -hmm. Doctor Who. It's run by three kind of feisty I think they're American aliens. Yeah, it, yeah, Cause it's, yeah. Because it's going to be Oprah Winfrey, Mindy Kaling, and Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, so. in Ava DuVernay's yeah. uh, adaptation that she's working on right mm -hmm. now. So they end up uh, traveling through, and they end up in this place called Camazots. Camazots. Which keeps reminding me of Cam it feels like a dark Camelot. Like that's the oh. that's the thing that you know. I feel like yeah. Z is always the like, mm, like mm -hmm. it's World like Bizarro. Yeah, it's always Bizarro. You're right. It always gives it's that a weird kind of letter, element. Man. It's a weird letter. Words, man. Absolutely. Language. <laughs> we could have a whole site. Have you seen Arrival yet? No. Oh, I want to. Okay. You should. So it's all about language. About, well, now I'm already behind because it's like I gotta go see Arrival. I gotta see Fantastic Beasts. I know. Gotta, I okay. Mean, okay. All right. I gotta get on. Get up? my get my <laughs> shit together. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. Great. <laughs> so what is Camazots? What is this planet? It's a planet that they land on. So the women drop the kids off. Yeah. What is it? So they drop them off. They basically give them some advice and some gifts. They give Meg um, a pair of spectacles. They tell Charles Wallace to watch out for his arrogance mm -hmm. and to realize that he doesn't know everything. Mm -hmm. And for Meg to accept her faults. And then Calvin, the power of listening? I think so. Communicating, communicating think so. his power of communicating. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, and so speaking they- of, Speaking of Calvin, real quick, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. There's a great question from Patch okay. in the chat. Concerning analysis of Wrinkle, was there one character above the others that you found yourself feeling more empathy for than you might have originally thought you would? For me, it's Calvin. Yeah. For me, it's Calvin. Calvin originally started as a character who I was like, who's this kid? <laughs> who's this little snot? <laughs> and then as the story progressed, and we get to the, 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 the moment where he gets dropped off on Camazots, and it's just him and Meg and, and Charles Wallace, I'm really feeling for Calvin. I'm, I, I think I'm relating more to him. We saw that scene with his mother that he was able to see with the, um, uh, the happy medium, mm -hmm. showed all of the children their homes, back at home, their lives back at home, and we got to see Calvin's mom when she was like not in a great place, and no. she was angry, and she was hitting one of her kids, and, and they kind of reeled back from that, and Calvin was like, it's okay, don't worry about it, don't feel sad about me, like that's my life. And I'm like, okay, I think I understand the character of Calvin a little bit more, and why he wanted to join, or why he was so happy to meet characters that were like him, especially Charles Wallace. Them, them two were just vibing on how Good smart sport. they were. Good sport, right? They have this, yeah, exactly. So in the, in the three chapters that we'll talk about tonight in a little bit, I felt more for Calvin than I originally thought I was going to. So the kids were gifted these, these, these abilities or like gifts, yeah. and then what is the world of Camazots? It is a world where everyone is the same. Uh, everyone, there's this very eerie scene that feels like a Twilight Zone episode where all the kids are bouncing balls at the same time in unison. Mm -hmm. No one is different. No one has a unique thought. And so they're dropped off there and they're mm -hmm. trying to find their dad. They don't really know anything about what's going on. They sort of have to use their wits to figure things out, which is why I think the point of this exercise is yeah. that the, it's a test. It feels like a little bit from the, the misses mm -hmm. and, and they do have to figure out how to use their gifts and accept their weaknesses to stay them, to remain themselves, I think, and to, to hold on to that. We talked about being a child and that mm -hmm. sort of, um, you're free from that societal anxiety that you get later. Like middle yeah. school is usually the point for most people where, Oof. where tough, tough you're like, oh God, I'm not like anyone else. And I, that's bad. But when you're a kid, you, it doesn't matter if you draw between the lines. It doesn't matter if you're off, say, singing to yourself mm -hmm. by yourself, for example, hypothetically, when you were a little girl. Mm -hmm. And and then when you're older, hypothetically. like, so, you know, maybe. Just completely just off the yeah, top of Rachel's head. Just totally, to, totally, just like, maybe you were one of those kids that did yeah. that. And and then you get to school and they're like, well, what are you doing, you're so weird. you weirdo? Yeah, and you're yeah. Like, but I have these worlds in my head that, yeah. you know, and so 
I think that the, chap the chapters that we got to is them really being tested on that when they discover the central, central intelligence. Central intelligence. Yes. It. It's just central intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's it. Not agency, but just the central intelligence. I know. I keep being like. Mm. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's what's happened. The three, the three women really dropped off the kids. You know, they left them up creek without a paddle because they have to go and they have to talk to adults and ask questions. And it's so Twilight Zoney. Mm -hmm. It's so Stepford Wives. All the yeah. adults are like, you, you, you're just a child. You don't know what we're supposed to be doing. And it's really weird and terrifying and scary. So, it, so that's what we know. Now that we know what's happened so far, uh, we're going to talk about the next part of the book, the next third, I guess, or the next quarter, uh, <laughs> which is going to be chapter seven, eight, and nine. And um, this book is terrifying. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this book is terrifying. I'm picturing, I don't have kids, but I'm picturing if one day I do have kids, me reading this to them. It's horrifying. Yeah. It's really scary. These kids are in peril, but like on an alien planet full of adults that like maybe will want to kill them. Mm -hmm. They keep talking about, you know, how if these kids have to keep asking questions in Kamazots that they're going to have to get like uh, repurposed or reprogrammed or what's That's, the word that they use? Yeah, there's um, that like, scene. Oh, yeah. you don't, oh you're not gonna, you're going to have to like be proceduralized or whatever. Like, yeah. It's so it's like, terrifying. It's like, don't worry, it doesn't hurt that much. You're like, what, what are you talking about? What is happening? <laughs> and, and here you're seeing some of the great, uh, ooh, a trilogy, some of the great covers of the book. And the, that cover right there that has that looks like Martian Manhunter down below. That's not Martian Manhunter. That is a character that is described as the man with red eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's the name of Chapter 7 is the man with red eyes. There's another great cover there. That's, I love that cover. Um, that's, I think, from the first printing. But uh, the man with red eyes, let's talk about it. I want to ask the chat what you guys think. Is it too scary for kids even? I or don't is it, think so. But, but it's that great level of like even Jurassic Park is too scary for kids but not. There's yeah. kids that are in danger but like that's part of the fun and that's part of the excitement of it and um, uh, so the man with red eyes is a chapter that opens with the kids finding out where they need to go to to talk to who's in charge and they end up meeting this man who is described in a really creepy way he's got these glaring red terrifying eyes there's all these men around him in this darkened room in this huge darkened hallway uh, the men around him that have suits that will just come out of the shadows out of nowhere like to do stuff and come back whether they're bringing like food for the kids or whatever and Charles Wallace is incredibly smart. Uh, what happens to Charles Wallace in this scene, Rachel? Uh, let everybody know. Yeah, so A, I was picturing sort of a Wizard of Oz vibe in this room. Yes, he's the wizard. Where you're in yes. this like long corridor and he's very scary. Um, and so they come across the man with the red eyes and Charles Wallace is trying to figure him out because Charles Wallace is very special. He's a special kid. Mm -hmm. We've already established that he processes things differently. He might be some sort of... I feel like he has some sort of connection to the Mrs. Witch and Mrs. What's It and okay. Mrs. Okay. Uh, who? Who? I'm like, Mrs. Who? Uh, what's yeah. her? Mrs. Oh, who? Yeah. Mrs. Who's who? on third? Yeah, who's on third? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. What's It and Mrs. Uh, oh, what's yeah. her name? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, we just did a comedy bit. Yeah, That's funny. you're welcome. Uh, so we will get to It, High in 2000, which is mm -hmm. not Pennywise the Clown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would take... An even Ooh. darker turn. Are there any other famous it's in popular culture other than Pennywise the Clown? There's him, but that's the devil from the Powerpuff Girls, not yeah. him. Adam Warlock. What's that? Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock is him, yeah. and then there's yeah, her it. in Marvel Comics stuff. Great, I thank you. Thank I you think there com. are. I think there's got to be other it's. A lot in like it isn't it. No, that's Thing from oh, yeah. the Adam's family. Thing, yeah, the, the hand. severed hand. Yeah. Great. So we'll talk. We'll t what's that? Cousin it. Yeah. It's cousin it. Cousin it and Thing. Yeah. And then the thing, hand, yeah. yeah, cousin it. Okay, so we're not. It's not cousin. It. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> but in okay, this no. in, in this chapter, the man with the man with red eyes. Um, yeah, I'm definitely picturing Wizard of Oz. And what is it? What exactly is his sort of power? What does he do to the kids? So he's he's using telepathy to communicate with them, and Creepy. he's trying to convince them that them being different is wrong they need to join it whoever it is it mm -hmm. he calls it the boss he calls it later the happy sadist which oh. like imagine like i th so i read this and the only parts that really stand out to me are the like whimsy mm -hmm. of the women um when you were a did, kid you, you read yeah it before. that's yeah. what i that's what i remember i don't really remember this part as well um and just the like not the power of knowledge in that theme in this but i'm not surprised because i got into horror books at a really young age so mm -hmm. maybe this like turned that <laughs> but um but he so Charles Wallace is trying to get 
into his head, into the man with the red eyes. Because head Charles to Wallace him out. has some kind of maybe psychic abilities, mm -hmm. maybe em empathic mm -hmm. ability. I also picture maybe like Mati from uh, Captain Planet, where oh. he could, he had the power of heart and he could like feel animals' pain and sense their like feelings and stuff. Yeah. Like maybe Charles Wallace has that. Yeah, he's like an empath or something. Is is definitely he can read. We have established earlier in the book that he can read his mother and Meg really, really well. He mm -hmm. knows. It feels like he knows what's going to happen a little bit. Mm -hmm. He understands these grand concepts that the others don't. And I think because we know that this is part of a quartet, that mm -hmm. they'll, there will probably oh, be I more so. info about that. But So he tries to get into the man with the red eyes head. And he's like arrogant enough to go, I think I can do this. Which is exactly what I they told him not to I do. I know, Rachel, I know. And his sister and Calvin <laughs> are like, bro, don't do it. He's yeah. like, I got it, I'm five. <laughs> I know what's up. Like, you little kid. You little Ugh, oh, We fella. love you though, so much, you little fella. You're so cute. <laughs> so he is, he goes into, there's one, oh, before I get into that part, just one part that I really liked was that they, they're starving. They haven't eaten anything because the... the because they're humans and haven't been fed. They haven't been fed in, in what feels like days. They've been traveling and Mrs. Who, Mrs. Which, and Mrs. What's It yeah. don't eat, so they don't think about that. And it's been forever, so the man with the red eyes wheels out all this amazing like a Thanksgiving feast, basically. Mm -hmm. made me really hungry while I was reading mm -hmm. it. Um, and Meg and Calvin are chowing down. Yeah, because it tastes good to them, but... Why? Because they have it blocked the man with the red eyes out of their... Brain. So, so he's he influencing them. Yes. So but what is wh wh little. what's the food if it's not food? He's trying to entice. I mean, he's it's part of the world. So he says it's just nutrients. It's yeah. It's not real food. It's just it it'll t it's actually it would actually taste like sand to you. But mm -hmm. he's trying to get them to. It's like the house from Haunting of Hill House a little bit. Yeah. He's trying to pull them in. I think rein them in and weaken them get them to trust him so that he can overpower them because yeah. they can't fight him off as well yeah. as Charles Wallace. And so when Charles Wallace tries to eat it, he's like, oh, it tastes like sand mm -hmm. because he's completely blocked the man with the red eyes. So when yeah. he lets his guard down, thinking that he can defeat him, and he's like, I'll go into his head to figure this out, but I can come out back out again anytime. No, you can't. No, and you he can't. Doesn't. And he it's doesn't. horrifying. It's horrifying. Patch says in the chat, Charles is <gasps> gone. Charles is gone. When Meg was saying that about her little five-year-old brother and like her and Calvin were freaking out, I was like, this is horrifying. <laughs> this is absolutely horrifying. Why would you read this to a child? Like, th like this is the scariest thing ever. Yeah. And it's apparently also the name of a nerdcore punk band. Ooh, Charles is gone. Cool. I'm going to look them up. Thank Synergy. you, Patch. Tweet those the band to me. Tweet yeah. that band to me. That's hilarious. Charles is gone. Charles and then so he's scary. just like, Oh yeah, she. And that's that's kind of the end of the chapter of the man with red eyes. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, you know, we're, we'll be talking about the film in a little bit, but but the rumor is is that uh, Michael Pena yes. from Ant Man, from World Trade World Trade Center, from Observe and Report, from Cesar he's Chavez down. is playing. He's bounding down. That's your favorite. There he is, right there, <laughs> Michael Pena. I love uh, him. From the Ant Man premiere is maybe playing the man with red eyes. Yes, he's playing a character called Red. Mmm. So it's, it's gotta, probably going to be, the man be with him, red eyes. right? So um, and and for me, <laughs> I was picturing Michael Pena, and it worked for me. Yeah. Because to me, the man with red eyes is at the top of this chain of this world, and he kind of says the same way that like Loki from the Avengers mm -hmm. or other manipulative character says, "I make the decisions for everybody here on this planet. I make the decisions. Once you submit, you realize how much better this is. Don't you want to be ruled by me? It's so much simpler. It's so much better." And I could picture a very charismatic actor like Michael Pena, like mm -hmm. pulling that off while still being creepy, but still being just really like, hey, come on. He's he's very calm. You in yes. the some of the language in the book is how calm he is, and then he's sharp, and you get these mm -hmm. little tidbits. I love her writing mm -hmm. um, and the way Amazing. she does the dialogue, but you can feel him snarling in their head a little bit. There's yeah. different elements of that, but for the most part. He's very he's welcoming. Very calm. He's and very when he calm. actually smiles with his real smile, in in not mentally or telepathically, but actually smiles, the kids are like, "Oh, how creepy is that?" Like because of how, I mean, it's just terrifying. It's like it's similar to a Twilight Zone, yeah, or Stepford Wives, where mm -hmm. they look happy. There's nothing wrong with them, but it's terrifying mm -hmm. because it's that you lose your sense of self, and fold into this. Absolutely. And so, he, I think he's going to do a great job, and yeah. I think that. Um, there's also a hint in there, too, that, that Meg starts to see that while there is this man with the red eyes, there's something speaking through him. He's also a puppet. He's also a puppet. Oh, Everyone's my gosh. A puppet. That's so scary. Everyone's a puppet, man. It's a, everyone's a puppet, man. <laughs> uh, question for you, Rachel. Can Charles Wallace move matter with his mind? 
Did we cover that? And is that that's in the, the chapter? Next, that's, that's, that's in the, the next, next chapter. One. So he does. So after Charles Wallace is gone. Then, yes. Oh which my is gosh. So sad. That's how the it ends. The next one's called the transparent column. What is the transparent column? So it's that's like a Wonka, Wonka Vader. Yes. Okay. So that's Thank you. well. So that's the. It could be Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. We were talking. We were talking a little bit about Charlie that. and the Great Glass Elevator, like from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Have you ever read? Oh man. No, I haven't there's read that. There's a sequel to the book. Yes, and it was Charlie directed and by Tim Burton and was terrible. But no, 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 in that, no, there's no, no, a no, 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 no separate. Okay, great. Oh, no, we're that's not talking bad. about that. That's okay, great. No, Got no, it. No. Um, cool. No, there's a sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl cool. called Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. Very nice. And it's actually I like it better than. The book. Very Not cool. The, oh, just real quick, book. Rachel. Uh, uh, Miss Rachel with an <laughs> I uh, or a one says, Rachel's shirt is everything. Thanks, Rachel. Rachel Power. Rachel Power. Okay. Any Hector's in the chat? <laughs> no? Okay, hit you me can up. Be, you can be, you if can you're be Hector, <laughs> Hector Power. Power. Rachel Power. Oh, Rachel Power? All right, Rachel Power. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, um, great. So, so she's sobbing. Charles Wallace. This is a, this is a good um, little sec section where... Uh, Charles Wallace sat there tucking away turkey and dressing as though it were the most delicious thing he had ever tasted. And right away you're like, something's, something is wrong because he, before, it didn't affect him. Ugh. He was dressed like Charles Wallace. He looked like Charles Wallace. He had the same sandy brown hair, the same face that had not yet lost its baby roundness. Only the eyes were different for the black was still swallowed up in blue. But it was far more than this that made Meg feel that Charles Wallace was gone, that the little boy in his place was only a copy of Charles Wallace, only a doll. And he's no, creepy. He's I don't like, like a that. Damien yeah. style, Ugh, possessed yeah. child, just like, come with me, Meg, you will join us. It's, it's just totally pulled into it's it. It's a horror story, horror film trope. The child who's like super in control and knows exactly what's going on. And doing that. Stop doing that. Stop <laughs> doing that, Rachel. I hated it. It freaked me out. Uh, I pictured reading this to a kid and them going like, "Stop!" And I'm like, I'm so, "I have to finish the story. I'm sorry. We got to know what happened." It's got to be a happy it's ending. A, here. It's got to be a happy ending. It's like here. the bad. Have you ever seen the Bad Seed? No. It's a. Uh, it's from the '50s and it's a uh, sort it's like of like that. psychopathic girl with like blonde it. braids and she goes. She, I don't like it. Right after she kills someone, she goes to her mom and she goes, "I have the prettiest mother." Uh, I used uh, to do it to my mom. You did. Yeah. That, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, Rachel. That's great. Uh, Fox Dragon Nerd says, a puppet man or a puppet man? Ooh. A muppet of a man. That's how much of a puppet Aww. Charles Wallace is. It's just a little tiny, like, right this way. We know where we're going. And takes the children to the the uh, transparent elevator. The, is that what it's called, so right? The, so there, no, it's transparent the transparent column. So, thank you. So I thought, here's a question. I thought the transparent column is where they find, at the end of that chapter, Mr. Murray. Yes. That he's in. So they yes. take, so, so it's not the route that they're going but they along the way um there's a if i can find it mm -hmm. there's a spot where they move charles moves with his mind yeah oh what does he say but he's like moving the atoms and moving yeah you know. the atoms yeah so yeah. he says yeah so there there's a wall there and all of a sudden he just moves it and it's away with his mind and so whatever yeah. It has done has tapped into the power of Charles Wallace. Oh, that's what I felt. You don't like. think that whatever has taken control of Charles Wallace could do that, no matter what body they were inhabiting, that they could move? You don't think it's Maybe. their psychic ability? You think it's Charles Wallace specifically, uh, with mm. his mental capacity, is able to move things with his mind and reatomize and atomize things and? Well, some of them are doing it, so maybe it is an it thing, but maybe mm -hmm. it's maybe that's a power that you could use for good or evil that the Mrs. I, Who I and gotcha. Mrs. What's its of the world have as well. Plague Wind says he's a Cylon, very similar to a Cylon. Dragon Fox Nerd says this is not a children's book, not in all caps. I kind of am agreeing right now only because it's so scary. Yeah. It's so scary. I know that it's going to have a, a, a happier ending, but I want to read a quick section uh, yeah. real quick before we just keep talking about meeting Mr. Murray, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Before we get to Mr. Murray, Charles Wallace uh, uh, is talking to Meg and Calvin, and I think pretty much sums up what we've been discussing is like the themes of the book, the mm -hmm. theme of the story. Uh, um, this is what uh, happens here. Oh, yes, you do. You've seen at home how true it is. Nope, let, let me start a little earlier than that. Calvin licked his lips. Like he does. That, he's such a cool guy. Where are we going? Up, Charles continued his lecture. On Kamazots, we are all happy because we are all alike. Differences create problems. You know that, don't you, dear sister? Dear sister. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. He's mind controlled at this point. No, Meg said. Oh, yes, you do. You've seen at home how true it is. You know that's the reason you're not happy at school, because you're different. 
I'm different and I'm happy, Calvin said, but you pretend that you aren't different. I'm different and I like being different, Calvin's voice was unnaturally loud. Maybe I don't like being different, Meg said, but I don't want to be like everybody else either. That to me sums Amazing. up the theme of the book. It is. I think it's beautiful. I think it's fantastic. And I think that Meg is, is it, that's what she learns in this story or what she will learn. Yeah. Uh, that they can all use their individual abilities and skills and we all have them. We all have superpowers and it's great. Um, Pat says, we can play forever and ever <laughs> and ever. Oh, man. Children are scary to begin with, which makes scary children even <laughs> scarier, says Fox Dragon Nerd. That's right. That's a fair point. So, okay, so, Rachel, okay, back to the story. It's, it, everything has gone to crap. It, everything's <laughs> horrifying. But then they see Chris Pine, a.k.a. Mr. Murray. Which makes everything better. Makes everything better, Always yes. Always good. Um, I'm so excited to see that. We'll get to the movie. But yeah. I, I keep picturing them. I love that they released all of that casting info right before yeah. we started this. <laughs> it's it was so helpful. Timing. Totally, yeah. Um, yeah. I love, too, that uh, Charles Wallace as... Uh, possessed Charles Wallace and all of the man with the red eyes don't really understand love either. They don't get this attachment yeah. to the father. So that's very clinical. There's no emotion or heart in it. So I think it's not only the power of knowledge and, and individuality, but mm -hmm. you see them always holding hands. They're all there. They like find strength the in siblings. joining yeah. hands and, and with Calvin. Calvin. And I think it's not just being yourself, but, but a togetherness and, acceptance that everyone can be different but we can still be together that doesn't mean totally. that we have to be separate which i think is really powerful yeah. too when the kids see mr murray in this like invisible jail cell well, yeah uh meg points him out and calvin and charles wallace is like so what and i'm just like you little <laughs> that's the point <laughs> that's your point his fault, it's Hector. not his fault but he's like why would i care he he's my <laughs> father why do i care about my father and that's because it or whatever has taken over they don't understand love like you're saying yeah. so so set the scene. What's happening when they finally so meet up with they, they Papa Murray? So they go to see Papa Murray, and mm -hmm. they can't get through past this invisible barrier, and he can't see them. Oh, that was yeah. really good. Thank you. I went to Mime College in France for eight years. Oh. Cool. <laughs> Total lie. See, I went to Lion College for forever. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, uh, did you also get a BA in BS, a.k.a. English? <laughs> uh, no, I went to art school, not smart school, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> fart school. That's what I went to. I got a degree in uselessness. <laughs> Yeah, but I love you anime. Joke, All right, but good. Dan Casey yeah. actually used to do mime mm. work and if stuff, I believe which it. is great. Um, and then he learned Japanese, Dan Casey. I know. Duh, All right. Dan. Yeah. Um, so they, he, Mr. Murray can't see them, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get through, and they can't get through to him, and Charles Wallace is getting stronger and stronger, and so I forget the order, but uh, Meg puts on the spectacles. Yes, they were given received. to her by Mrs. Who. Yes. Mrs. Who, yes. And all of a sudden she can get she can see how to get through. I think she can kind of see the way that it and Charles Wallace can and the way that they see mm. Adams. Mm -hmm. So I think cuz I was trying to figure out I was like how did you know how to just like Walk oh in. the glasses do it. Yeah. But I think part of it you find out later when she gets in there that without the glasses you can't see outside of that transparent column. So the, the father right. couldn't see them. So she, there's this beautiful moment where she thinks about all of the sad moments she's had missing him and how sad her mom has been and how hard it has been on their family, especially this is what, 1962, sure. middle America. So not sure. a super accepting small town population. Right. A lot of sadness. And then that all melts away and she's with her dad and, and that was really sweet. You I know, thought. he's got long hair to his shoulders and a beard. Chris Pine, is, uh, Chris Pine is still super handsome. Oh, man. And he's hugging his daughter, <laughs> you know. And, and he seems to know what's going on because she's explaining and he's kind of like, I understand. Like, he knows about the world because, you know, he's been gone for, for many years. And uh, Charles Wallace, uh, they, they meet up with Charles Wallace. At what point do they start fighting off the influence of it with quotes? So that's near, that's is the, that the next chapter. That's the next chapter. So basically. The next chapter is it. And yeah. they got the dad and they're We're trying there, to. We're there, Steve. Yeah, or we're there. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um, yeah, so they, she, she sees her father. She goes in with him. She gives him the glasses so that he can see and how to get out. And they go through the transparent column, and they're fighting each other off. And they start, I think they start, they're all fighting. They're all sort of scared. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to, oh, because I think I skipped ahead. So then, as they're arguing. Oh, they get to it. That's right. Which we got, we have to read that description because <sighs> it's, so they're, 
they're being pulled down a corner by evil Charles Wallace. Yes, who's like, right this way, you know yeah. where we're going. <laughs> I'm a little kid. <laughs> he's so, I can't wait to see. That's going to be great. Because he's so great and that you lo we love him so much in the beginning. We're like, look at this precocious little dude. And then he he's going to, oh, that's going to be oh, good. Terrifying. going to be good. Mm -hmm. So there's this rhythmic pulsing and they're feeling something and it's very strange and, a, and a, it feel, it's like a heartbeat in the whole room, in the whole place. And they're feeling it and they're feeling it. As she continued to step slowly forward, at last she realized what the thing on the dais was. It was a brain, a disembodied brain, an oversized brain, just enough larger than normal to be completely revolting and terrifying, a living brain, a brain that pulsed and quivered, that seized and commanded. No wonder the brain was called it. It was the most horrible, the most repellent thing she had ever seen, far more nauseating than anything she had ever imagined with her conscious mind or that had ever tormented her in her most terrible nightmares. But as she had felt, she was beyond fear, so now she was beyond screaming. Mm. What? I mean, Horrifying. Get out of here with that. That's so scary. Yes. A giant, quivering brain. And the scariest Ugh. thing is, is that she wanted to kill it, and Charles Wallace, being controlled by it, was like, if you kill it, you'll kill your brother. If you kill me, you'll kill your brother out of like Charles Wallace's mouth. It was really, really scary. Because um, he's connected to it. Yeah. To uh, it. Patch asks, what if we think of it as an acronym that we all know? IT technology is an absorber of imagination, a concept that could mean the man with the red eyes is working for it or some kind of a computer computation machine. I don't know where you're going, Patch. You seem like you're smarter than me, but keep <laughs> plugging in those comments. We really appreciate it, guys. And it's not just about us here on Alpha Book Club. It is now time to bring in a viewer from home. Yes. One of the great things about ABC, that's Alpha Book Club, is that it's an online book club. So you can dial in directly to us to discuss. Let's take a viewer. Who have we got on the line? Oh, we need these. Hey, hi. Is, hey, is, guys. Is, oh. is it who I think it is? Is this, is this Java Geek Girl? It is. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Thank it you is. so much for calling. Yay. It's so good to see you. Hi. You guys. It's great Welcome. to see you. We had so much fun chatting with you last yeah. week um, and all of the uh, great info. Yeah, all the info that you had and all yeah. the reference points. So are there any clues that uh, from the text this week that you know any sort of history about? Uh, yes. Uh, you just have to oh, forgive me. This found. is the stuff that I get really nerdy about. Uh, my degrees, uh, though we're in religion, we're all about really looking at texts. Welcome and home. All that stuff. You're mm -hmm. home. This is perfect. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> oh into it. Oh my God, no. This is what we <laughs> want to do. Uh, so one of the cool things of remembering about this being written in the 1960s in, is the Cold War was happening during this time. Uh, and so uh, some people will interpret the man with the red eyes as symbolizing communism. Red. red. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Why didn't All I realize that? Thank you. Great. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But, I mean, if you think about it, and think about it um, this idea of conformity, likeness, difference is being bad, we all have to be the same, um, fits into the stereotypes of communism and the fears that we're having at the time. I mean, yes, this, these chapters are terrifying. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as absolutely. As far as the children's book, but I think the fears that were happening at that time, and kids who were probably overhearing things, there's such power for me reading this and this idea of love, embracing our difference, and togetherness especially. Um, absolutely. Uh, and thinking in uh, Lord, which up uh, in eight when Meg has that realization of like and equal are two entirely different things. Yeah. Yes. Like, so many of these concepts are still powerful today. You know. Absolutely. Later, Absolutely. Yeah. Um. And I know for me personally, uh, this was from I think chapter seven. Uh, they talked about. Was it? Uh, we ha we have to make decisions, and we can't make them if they're based on fear. Um, which for me, I think this is my fourth time now rereading this. Uh, I'm constantly finding new things in it that I hadn't seen before, but also just being reminded of these great ideals that we still need to embrace even today. If that makes sense. More than ever, more than ever. Java Book Geek Girl, uh, I want to ask you a question because you mentioned that you, this is the, the umpteenth time you've reread it, <laughs> fourth somewhere in there. Um, but I'm not too familiar about why A Wrinkle in Time is one of the most challenged books in terms of books that are, are, are taught in schools or that are in school libraries. Do you know a little bit about that? Can you tell us why it is challenged? Yeah, so again, going back to this being written in the 1960s, um, you know, 
Madeline Lingle is really challenging a lot of Christian ideals that were held at the time. This idea of bringing right. together spirituality, religious ideals, and science, and that those aren't two completely opposite and opposing things, that they can be brought together, speak to us, and show beauty in the world in their own unique ways. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people, particularly in the 60s and even continuing forward, are still challenged by that in a lot of ways. Um, people misinterpret uh, the Shakespeare references to the misses as being witches, so therefore now this book is about witchcraft. Um, right. <laughs> uh, so all those things, and I think it's more often about people who haven't really read the book and taken it for what it is, uh, or just making assumptions about it and sometimes not wanting to be challenged. But I mean, overall, this book is about love. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what could be better than that. Absolutely. Totally agree. It's basically, it sounds like the, the modern version of that, and this is something I run into a lot uh, with Nerdist, is people who don't read the article <laughs> Just before the they comment on yeah. the Facebook post yeah. about it. So there, <laughs> that's my <laughs> equivalent of it. Read the article before you Absolutely. comment on it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Real quick in the chat, Plaguewind says, Evil Charles Wallace reminds me of Cassandra Nova. That's an X-Men reference. Ooh. Spot on. We got a ooh from B Comp. He agrees <laughs> with that. That's great. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, what is it about... Um, if you can elaborate a little bit, uh, Java Book Geek Girl, about your, your, your passion and your love and your nerdiness and your degrees, what is it about A Wrinkle in Time that is so exciting for you to reread? Why is it so cool that you get to unpack that stuff? Uh, I think for me, I grew up uh, originally in Oklahoma, um, and I was a person who had more progressive ideals. I was really into science and reason. I was a nerd. I loved reading and doing these things mm -hmm. um, and found challenges as far as um, my faith life, if that makes sense. Uh, and this was one of the first books that really let me see an embrace of both, yeah. that those things were okay to be together and that there was beauty in both and things to learn from both. Um, and uh, I think I said this a few weeks ago, uh, I come from a kind of dysfunctional, a lot of hard times family. Uh, so I really related to Calvin and his story. And at times in my life I've related to Meg and at other times I've related to uh, Charles Wallace. And so at different points coming back to this story and relating to a new character in a different way, speaking to that again and reminding me of sort of these positive ideals that I want to hold in my own life. Yeah. Um, it just made this a really cool book to keep coming back to. And as, as an adult, you see more and more things, too. I mean, there's so many references and subtleties that you don't get until you've read Shakespeare, which, you know, when I was 12, when I first read it, I hadn't read Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I didn't appreciate those references as well as I do now, having you know, taken Shakespeare in literature yeah. and things like that. So. That's awesome. Have you, without spoiling it for people who haven't yet, have you read yes. the rest of the Wrinkle series? Have you read the rest of the series of the Murray Family I series? I actually have not. <gasps> um, it's been on my to-do list for a really long time, and it's just <laughs> one of those I didn't get around to it. I also got really into Harry Potter at the yeah. show after I read this, and so, you know, that sort of consumed my life for till now, still. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, are you looking forward to the the new live action movie? There's been other there's been adaptations before, right? There was a, a made for TV Disney film. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you that you're excited about, or do you kind of feel like whether it's good or bad, you know, we're always going to have this? What are your What are your stand What's your stance on it? What do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the movie. I do vaguely recall seeing the TV movie. And it was what it was. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was bad. Let's just be, it was as, bad. As most TV movies are. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially given just where we are today as far as technology and what movies can do and, and special effects and things, uh, I'm really excited and hopeful of what they'll be able to take some of the more, you know, magical, mystical aspects of this um, yeah. and bring it to life in a new way. Uh, I love the diversity of the cast that they're bringing in to tell the story, mm -hmm. especially in today's world today. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hopeful. I'm definitely planning on seeing it. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, definitely keep calling in. We love chatting with you, and yes. your insight thank is you. invaluable. Keep chatting. Part of this book club. I'm sure there's going to be references we don't get in that last quarter of the book. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. Thanks so it was much. so great to see you. Yeah. yeah. Great night. You too. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much. Java Book Geek Girl. Java Book, that's the, that's the right uh, 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 name, right? It was Java yeah, Book Java. Geek Girl? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I got All it. No, it started things. with Java. 
And then also uh, Ravenwolf in the comments says, I wish I would have known. I would have reread A Wrinkle in Time. Well, you are in luck because we still have one final section to cover next week. Yes. Maud's going to be catching up with us uh, when she gets back, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So you can catch up. We also have all of the episodes that we've done and discussed so far on Alpha. So you can watch those if you want to kind of at your own pace. Ca catch Read up. Read it. Watch it at your own pace. And and then uh, and then join us next week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so guys, it's that time. Just like Rachel was saying, your assignment, if you choose to accept it, is to read chapters 10, 11, 12. Or just all of A Wrinkle in Time, the book. Just yeah, read, read the it whole all book. In one Come week, back you next can do week. It. It's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a quick, quick read. It is a it's quick, a quick read. read. It's a quick and read. It's, um, we leave we leave our our dear friends trying to tesser without the with their dad with their dad tessering with and their dad. We don't know. We still don't really know how it works. So yeah. it's really exciting. Please mm -hmm. join us again. You can watch previous episodes before. You can go through. We did the Haunting of Hill House before. You can go back and watch those too if We've you want to read We've got so along. many awesome baller books that we have lined up to read. Yep. That we have like an embarrassment of riches. Like it's we have to choose. It's I still know. Like, That's right. We're voting next week. We're yeah. voting next week. You guys get to help us vote. You yeah, get to vote. Yeah. You get to help us pick. I mean, you get to pick. We're yeah. gonna be bringing some suggestions mm -hmm. of some of the, we have a list of like already, like it feels like a hundred books that we yeah, want to read. So we'll be doing the show forever. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Raven Wolf says, awesome. I'll have to get my copy out and watch it. Yes. Great. Do it, Raven Wolf. And also cool name, Raven Wolf. That's really cool. Uh, look at well, look what Patch said. Watch the stage play adaptation of Wrinkle in Ashland, Oregon in 2014. Very pleased to hear of a movie coming. That's awesome. cool. Yeah. That's I would like to see this on the stage. How do they test her? <laughs> and we're always looking for our next books. If you guys have any recommendations, feel free to hit us up on chat or tweet at Nerdist or Geek and Sundry or join Team Alpha with the hashtag Alpha Book Club with your recommendation. You can tweet to Rachel or I uh, and uh, we'll write all that stuff down. We have enough programming and books to maybe do the show for about 80 years. Yep. We're I ready. Like. I'm ready. Book a month, 80 years. Yeah, be calm. Well, I was going to say, we're going to do the mannequin videos that they post. But we'll oh, we're going to... We just ran out of time. We ran yeah. out of time. We we're gonna, we'll yeah, we're, we're gonna, we have to talk about the film and we're, there's a really cool video that the production team threw up there, which is awesome. But, uh, but hopefully we'll see you guys. Yeah, you did great, yeah, Java you, Book Geek Java Girl. Book Big thanks yeah, to Java you Book got, Geek you Girl. So great, so awesome. Honestly, you should dial in every time because I yeah. feel like you have such incredible insight. Put and we really want to hear from you. Degree to work. Put this it to is work. A, a book club, so yeah. you guys are part of the book club. We're just yeah. physically here. We want to hear from everybody. Together. It's all about you guys. So yeah. guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Hector Navarro. I'm Rachel Hine. And we will see you guys next week right here on Alpha. Stick around for Choose Your Destiny happening right now. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>